Well, hey guys, what's up? I'm here with Totoro. I've been missing Totoro these past few past few days since I've been away. Um, but anyways, I am back from DC and um, I have been trying out Dr. Sam's new flawless sunscreen and I really love it and I'm excited to share it with you guys today and review it. I've been getting many requests to um, show it and to you know talk about it and what I think of it. Uh, if you're not familiar, Dr. Sam is a British dermatologist who has a fantastic growing skincare line, Flawless. I've reviewed her cleanser and her moisturizer, and she's fairly recently come out with, with a sunscreen. And her sunscreen is um, available in the UK for, I believe, £29. It is a combination sunscreen. So what that means is it has zinc in it. Uh, which is a physical sunscreen ingredient that shields out the damaging effects of ultraviolet light. And it also has uh, the chemical filter and an octinoxate, which helps to um, kind of absorb and dissipate ultraviolet radiation in the wavelengths of UVB radiation. So zinc gives good broad spectrum coverage by itself, but in combination with octinoxate, hence the name combination sunscreen, you get a really good broad spectrum coverage. This offers a high SPF of 50, which is fantastic. You know, in some of my earlier sunscreen videos, I would tell you all, oh, higher isn't necessarily better. Higher isn't necessarily better in terms of the ability of the sunscreen to necessarily protect you from a burn, but we have now garnered an appreciation that the higher the SPF, actually that, that, that is actually better because consumers don't apply sunscreen to a sufficient density to ever achieve the SPF on the label. They usually apply it maybe a quarter, a quarter of what they're supposed to. So to, to counter, counterbalance that, uh, it is actually now recommended and encouraged that, that you go higher and higher. Um, so 50 is a, fantastic, is a fantastic SPF to give you good protection against a burn. Burns uh, largely are due to UVB, um, which, is the ray, which are the rays of ultraviolet light that um, can damage the DNA in our skin cells. Um, but the SPF doesn't tell you anything about the sunscreen's ability to protect you from UVA. Those are those, those are those sneaky rays that penetrate deeply and age the skin. Zinc, however, is a fantastic uh, ingredient in sunscreens for protecting uh, against, for protect, offering protection from UVA. So those are the rays that don't burn you necessarily, and so you never really appreciate that they're there and doing, doing evils to your skin until you know you're in your until you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, it uh, shows up in the form of wrinkles, sagging skin, discoloration, and also contributes to the formation of skin cancers through suppression of the cutaneous immune system. So suffice it to say, this is a fantastic broad spectrum sunscreen. Can't comment on the um, UVA, how, how good the UVA protection is in this compared to other sunscreens. There's not a qualifier on that, but SPF 50 is a better choice than say SPF 30. Uh, just keeping in mind how, how users apply sunscreen. The inactive ingredients in this are likewise fantastic. This is a shea butter based moisturizer, moisturizing vehicle. So it's pretty moisturizing on its own because of the shea butter. Shea butter is a plant derived emollient that is uh, occlusive. So those are features in a moisturizer that you want. You want it to soften the skin and you want it to, to be sufficiently occlusive to seal in trans epidermal water losses that can occur throughout the day and lead to dryness. And shea butter is a phenomenal ingredient. You'll find it in many moisturizers moisturizers, many moisturizers that I recommend. It is, is what is in Dr. Sam's Flawless Moisturizer uh, as well. So fantastic ingredient, uh, makes this a nice moisturizer by itself. This also has niacinamide in it, uh, and I have a whole video talking about niacinamide, but niacinamide is probably one of the better studied cosmeceutical ingredients in terms of what it can do for the skin, and it you will find it in many moisturizers and it can uh, improve redness, it's anti-inflammatory, it can also kind of inhibit how pigment is transferred around in skin cells, so it can be protective against uh, some of the hyperpigmentation that may occur as a result of sun and visible light exposure. And it's also been shown to be helpful for acne and it is a antioxidant, so theoretically if it 
continues to, to harbor antioxidant free radical scavenging ability once it's actually on your skin, then, you know, potentially, theoretically, it could also buffer against some of the damaging effects of the of ultraviolet radiation. But on its own, niacinamide offers a lot and is frequently present in moisturizers. This is a non-comedogenic moisturizing vehicle. It will not clog pores. And it's nice and, and uh, aesthetically, it's very nice. It's lightweight, it's not greasy, it's not heavy. Um, it doesn't leave a shiny, greasy residual on the skin. It feels fantastic going on. Let's get another sip of my chaga latte here. This is my chaga elixir from Four Sigmatic, and I like to put it in um, heated up almond milk in the evening for a caffeine-free little latte. It's quite delicious. But personally, I have really been enjoying using Dr. Sam's sunscreen over the past week. I've used it in a variety of different settings, and I think it is fantastic. I've even used it, I, just, I started using it while I was in DC. It's much colder there, the heaters are on there, the, the air is a lot drier than here in, in Houston. So I've experienced it in two different climates, and I really like it a lot. Um, so this morning I put it on and I filmed myself using it so that you guys could get an appreciation. I'm currently wearing it now and I don't have, I just have the sunscreen on and my mascara on currently. I, I apply, I reapplied it, um, probably about 20 minutes ago. So you can see how it looks on my skin. The only other thing that I'm wearing is, is mascara. I'm not even wearing any tinted sunscreen today or my Color Science 3 in 1 eye shield. Um, but this morning when I got up, I chose to use first her moisturizer. And the reason I did that is because on her website she mentions that you can apply her sunscreen on after, after using your moisturizer, whatever moisturizer it is. Many of you like doing that. Many of you find that sunscreens by themselves can be a little drying depending on where you live and just kind of what your overall needs are as far as a moisturizer. Some of you don't find that that you get enough from your sunscreen. Personally, here in Houston, I do. All I need is my sunscreen in the morning, but um, I just wanted to show show you guys how, how you can combine the two, because you asked me that a fair amount. So this morning, just to a bare face, you guys know I don't wash my face in the morning. I just wake up and put the sunscreen on, but this morning I just woke up and I put a few drops, a few dots of her uh, flawless moisturizer on. It is a similar formulation as far as the ingredients. Check out my review of that product if you are interested in it, but I really love it. So I just dotted that on and it goes on fantastic onto a dry face, by the way. Um, just really kind of adds a nice emolliency to the skin, softens things up. If you're somebody who wakes up with kind of dull, dry skin, uh, it is a nice first thing in the morning. Perk up, and so I did that. And then the key, um, if you're gonna layer a moisturizer with a sunscreen, is just make sure that your moisturizer is dry before you move on to before you move on to your sunscreen. And the reason that is, is you want a nice dry layer for the sunscreen to set up. Um, you know, if you have kind of a greasy, wet layer, it can make the sunscreen kind of clump up and what have you. So just make sure that it's dry on there. But once the moisturizer is dry, then I just put the sunscreen on as I normally put on sunscreen. You know, um, I want to emphasize to you guys that I actually have, have shown that the more, the, the longer the amount of time you spend putting sunscreen on, the better you are at it and the better protection it offers. So the more time you spend doing it, uh, the better. I know time time is precious these days, so uh, it can it may feel like like you're being robbed of time putting sunscreen on, but trust me, you will you will buy time in the end as far as as far as the the outcome on your on your skin and your skin health. But this sunscreen actually goes on really nicely. It does not clump at all. Um, I, can, I can tell you, you know, the CeraVe AM sunscreen, which is also a combination sunscreen, it has zinc and chemical filters in it, similar to, to Dr. Sam's. The CeraVe sunscreen always, always clumps up uh, a little bit, and you kind of have to, you kind of have to work with it. This goes on, boom, on the face, no issue whatsoever. Um, so this is, this is a lot easier to put on the face uh, and, and spread on the skin in comparison to that. But it 
does leave more of a cast than L to MB UV clear and that cast does fade. I want to, I, hopefully you can see here, I purposely didn't put it on my ears this morning before, while I was filming this so you guys can kind of hopefully see the contrast, that little line there right up to my hairline where you can kind of see my, my um, unprotected versus protected skin. You can see a slight cast there, which for me is not, is not anything noticeable whatsoever. But for a darker skin type, you know, you may, you definitely will want to come on over this with a tinted sunscreen. Um, hopefully, do maybe Dr. Sam will come out with a tinted sunscreen in the future. That would be fantastic. Um, and you, uh, you know, you can imagine how that would go on over, over this nicely. Um, so yeah, I personally did not mind the cast whatsoever, and I find that it dries down pretty, pretty sheer for me. Uh, doesn't leave a noticeable cast. It also reapplies swimmingly throughout the day. That is that is another issue with sunscreen. If you don't reapply sunscreen, you kind of you know you lose the effect. All sunscreens need to be reapplied uh, in order to in order to protect your skin. It's not good enough to apply them just once a day uh, because if you just apply them like at eight o'clock in the morning and you know then two o'clock three o'clock wh whatever time you end up going out to your car boom you know your skin is no longer protected at that point so being able to reapply the sunscreen comfortably and easily and um you know without without a lot of pilling and and whatnot is key and this this reapplies really nicely Yep, <laughs> I had to change my battery and I just positioned the camera slightly to, to the left. But what I was saying is the sunscreen uh, reapplies really well throughout the day. You don't have to do a lot of playing with it. You don't have to work with it. It goes on really nicely. And the cast, like I said, it dries down sufficiently matte. This sunscreen is fantastic in its formulation. For those of you out there who have really sensitive skin and you find that sunscreen sting, burn, uh, this is great. It doesn't have any irritating ingredients. While chemical ingre chemical sunscreen ingredients can be more on the irritating side, octinoxate is generally pretty well tolerated, particularly in these combination sunscreens. Can't predict for everybody, you know, invariably somebody will find that the sunscreen stings. That is the case with anything, anything out there. There is no sting-proof topical. None, um, but this is this is a low risk one. I would say it doesn't have any irritating ingredients. It's very gentle, and because it applies really nicely, and you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, smearing and, and, and rubbing, it it's very nice in that way for sensitive skin. Again, can't predict though for people with rosacea. I think it would I think it would serve you well, but I can't predict 100%. Uh, Likewise, people with perioral dermatitis always a tricky tricky thing to predict. Some individuals will flare with certain things whereas others won't. So those are those are tricky situations. Oily prone skin, acne prone skin should not have an issue with this. Shea butter and shea butter based moisturizers are generally well tolerated, although some people find that when they use certain moisturizers, they get flares of their acne. Again, that's one of those things I can't really predict for anyone, but I would say this is this is a pretty safe, safe choice. Um, likewise, for people who suffer with a condition called seborrhea or seborrheic dermatitis, consider the sunscreen or consider a shea butter based uh, sunscreen. Shea butter is an, is an ingredient that is in a prescription moisturizer for seborrheic dermatitis. So clearly it is, clearly it is well tolerated, at least by people who have been prescribed that moisturizer. I feel comfortable uh, recommending shea butter based moisturizers to people with seborrheic dermatitis. It tends to go over, tends to go over well. And those of you with sebderm, those of you with fungal acne, which is also kind of related, um, consider giving this, this sunscreen a try if you are on the hunt for one that does not, that does not irritate your seborrhea and or fungal acne. So yeah, I have really loved using this sunscreen. It is, um, you know, a little on the, I would say slightly pricier side of average for sunscreen, but it's formulated very nicely. So I think it justifies the price. Uh, it's priced comparably to the L to MD sunscreens that I recommend to you guys. But for those of you outside of the UK, this does uh, get to be a little bit more on the costly side with the shipping and the duties. There's no way around that, unfortunately. It's just the nature of, of things. So, you know, that is what it is. Aesthetically speaking, it's very nice and she's done a really good job. The zinc 
cast is very, very minimal. It fades. There's no greasiness. There's no shininess. And this, this sunscreen, the way that it's balanced with the thickeners and whatnot, you don't get that clumping of zinc that you get with, that you get with CeraVe AM, for example. You don't get that clumping, you don't get that pilling. It goes on really nicely. So for those of you who are looking for a sunscreen that you wear under makeup, this is a good choice. Comment below. I know many of you guys are using her sunscreen and love it. Um, it was fantastic to meet Dr. Sam, by the way. I'm so lucky that I had the opportunity to meet her. She is just as fantastic in real life as uh, she is on, on her YouTube channel. She's a phenomenal individual and I'm so honored to have met her and I look forward to seeing I look forward to seeing what else comes out of her skincare line. I know that there will be many, many more exciting things down the road. So comment below those of you who are using this, what your experience is, how you like it. But I, I've really enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.